Hello, dear readers. It's Miss Yalbert again. Wow, I really enjoyed reading your reflections on our historical fiction text yesterday. First, let's go over some announcements. Scholars, if you haven't this morning, make sure that you log on to Lexia for 30 minutes after our lesson today. Remember, you should have at least 150 minutes by Friday. So if you've been doing at least 30 minutes on Monday, Tuesday, and this morning, you should already have 90 minutes, which is more than half of what you need by Friday. As a reminder, friends, if you are invited, make sure that you go to ELA Reteach at 1.30 and office hours from 2.30 to 4 o'clock. Each of these opportunities is three Vista virtual points. And yesterday, a lot of scholars got to use their free homework pass or eat their free pizza at lunch because they've been earning a lot of points. I can't wait to see you all at Elite Reteach and Office Hours. ELA Masters, yesterday we read The Bracelet, which is a historical fiction text. Emmy and her family in the story were not real. They were make-believe and came from the author's imagination. But the time and place where they lived in San Francisco in the 1940s, when Japanese Americans were being sent to internment camps, that was real. And today, friends, we'll be continuing to learn about the difference between infotext and historical fiction. Throughout this unit, remember, we need to be asking ourselves these essential questions. First, how is the setting important to the plot of the story? Can you tell me how is the setting important to the plot of the bracelet? Right. The bracelet took place in the 1940s, which we know from our schema now was when Japanese Americans were being sent away from their homes. That does not happen now, but it was a real thing that happened then. And that was the main problem of the story. I can also ask myself, what can stories teach readers about the past? I learned so much from your reflections yesterday after reading the bracelet and reading our text, The Internment Camps, the day before. We need to be asking ourselves, what am I learning about what happened back then? And finally, how do readers distinguish fact from fiction while reading historical fiction? Yesterday, we did a lot of work asking ourselves, hmm, is this what's happening in the story fact, a real thing from the setting or a time and place in history? Or is it fiction? It came from the author's imagination. Yesterday, we talked about how anything that had to do with Emmy and her family was fiction because they were make-believe. But anything that had to do with Japanese Americans being sent to internment camps and the conditions at those camps was fact. Ely Masters, let's review what historical fiction is. Remember that you can go into your resource under classwork to review. Hmm, scholars, say it with me. Historical fiction is an imaginative story that takes place in the historical past and may have some real events or people one more time, historical fiction is an imaginative story that takes place in the historical past and may have some real events or people. Your turn. Historical fiction is an Great job, friends. Ely Masters, let's review the characteristics of historical fiction. Can you remind me what is probably the most important characteristic of historical fiction? 
Yes, the setting is important. Let's add that to our Google form. One characteristic of historical fiction is that the setting is important. Make sure you pause your video and type that in now. You are all experts now. Can you remind me what kind of text is historical fiction? Is it narrative or make-believe or infotext? It's all nonfiction or real facts. Yes, scholars, the bracelet, a text that was historical fiction, was a narrative text. There were parts that were real facts, but the story itself is a narrative historical fiction story. Good. Scholars, another characteristic of historical fiction is that it is often focused on Yes, real issues of that time in history. So in the bracelet, the real issue was that Emmy was being sent to an internment camp because she was Japanese American. So in the 1940s, that was a real issue of that time. Let's add that to our Google form. Another characteristic of historical fiction is it is often focused on Yes, real issues of the time in history and characters' perspective of those issues. Can you remind me what was Emmy and even Emmy's sister, Reiko? What was their perspectives of the fact that they had to move to an internment camp because they were Japanese American? How did they think or feel about that? Tell me. Right. I remember multiple times in the bracelet that Emmy said they were loyal Americans, but the United States government didn't think so. Reiko said, stupid army, stupid war. So they were angry and sad that they were being treated that way. Good. My last characteristic of historical fiction is that some values, perspectives, and living conditions are different from today. Eli Masters, in 2020, does the government still think that Japanese Americans are dangerous? And do we still put Japanese Americans in internment camps? Can you say no way? Right. Now, we know that that is not right and it was not just. And that's why President Reagan apologized in 1988. And those values then in the 1940s that Japanese Americans might be dangerous or not loyal to the United States, that was a value and perspective that was very different than how we feel today. ELA Masters. Today, we are going to be learning about a new topic, and it will help us understand the historical fiction text that we are reading tomorrow. Can you remind me, what do good readers usually do before we read a historical fiction text? Tell me. Yes, if you said we read a nonfiction info text, give me a high five. Yes, as good readers, we often read a nonfiction text before we read the fiction text, which is what we're doing today. Why do we read a nonfiction text or info text before we read our fiction text? Tell me. Yes, it builds our, good, our schema about the setting of that time and important people and events. It builds our schema.
Let's add that to our Google form. Good readers sometimes read nonfiction before reading historical fiction texts because, make sure that you write a complete sentence, it builds our schema. Good. If you need to, pause your video and type that in now. Scholars, tomorrow we will be reading a new historical fiction text called The Harmonica. Again, it is historical fiction, which means we know that most of it comes from the author's imagination. And the character in the story is make-believe. The main character is a Jewish boy, which means that the religion he follows and believes in is Judaism, just like how people who are Christian believe in Christianity. And again, this young Jewish boy is make-believe. He comes from the author's imagination. However, the setting of this story, which we know is important in historical fiction, was a real time and place in history. The harmonica actually also takes place during World War II. Over the past couple of days, we read a little bit about what was happening in America, in the United States during World War II in the 1940s, with putting Japanese Americans into internment camps. The harmonica takes place in a different country, in Europe called Poland. And during that time, there was a terrible event happening called the Holocaust. Ely Masters, we know that as good readers, we read nonfiction texts to help build our schema about the stories we'll be reading. So today, we will be building our schema by reading a nonfiction info text called The Holocaust to help us learn more about what was happening in this Jewish boy's world during that time. Again, scholars, what genre of text are we reading today? Yes, we are reading info text. We'll be reading an article called The Holocaust that will help us build our schema. ELA Masters, we'll be reading a lot in this text that might be a little difficult for us to understand and might cause us to have some feelings that we need to process. Remember to make sure that you grab a blank piece of paper or your special notebook that you've been writing your thoughts in about these real times in history. When you finish double checking your answers, go ahead and click next.